Okay, so with this video, we're going to take a little bit of a pause from new content, and we're going to go back and practice some problems, get into a little bit more detail of how you work with speed, velocity, and acceleration when it comes to actual, like, well, usually imaginary, but situations related to the real world. All right, so here's our first sample problem here. This is taken, again, all of these are taken from old exams put out by Cambridge for IGCSE. So here we have a car and it's at a traffic light and it starts to accelerate. And then this graph shows the speed versus time. So speed meters per second, time in seconds. Um, so what we've got is a straight line up at an angle and then we have a flat line. Now hopefully you remember from a couple videos ago, this flat part means that the speed speed of the vehicle is constant at that point. So the speed is constant. It's not stopped, but it's moving at a constant speed. It is no longer accelerating. So this portion here is the portion where it's accelerating. So the question is, how far does the car travel before it reaches a constant speed? Remember, so just as we just said, constant speed is this part of the graph here. So what we're interested in is how far it traveled, how far before it gets to that point right there. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but how far refers to distance, obviously. So we're looking for a distance. Now, this is a speed time graph, and hopefully you remember this. On a speed time graph, you can find the distance traveled by taking the area under the curve, or under the graph. So in this case, that would be Let's get a different color here. This area right here in red, that's what we need to calculate because that's the area under the graph before the car reaches a constant speed. So that red area right there, psh, color it in. Okay, so we're gonna calculate that. How do we do that? We're going to use the formula for the area of a triangle. So just move over here to some blank space keep that there where we can see it. So the area there is going to equal one half times the base times the height. So that's going to be one half times, now the base there is 10 seconds. The height is 20 meters per second. So 10 times 20 times one half. So what we've got there, 10 times 20 is 200. One half of that is going to be 100 meters. It's how far that vehicle travels before reaching constant speed. So let's go back over here. Where's the answer that says 100 meters? And it's right there. So that should be the answer for this one. All right, cool. Let's move to the next one. All right, so that was this problem. Okay, now here's our next problem. This one's just sort of conceptual, no calculating on this one. So it says the speed time graph here is uh, the graph of a bus that is traveling between bus stops. So the question is, where is acceleration the greatest? So where is acceleration the greatest, okay? And if you recall, acceleration is equal to the slope. So acceleration is equal to slope of the graph. So if we look at the slope here, here we've got a relatively shallow slope. Here the slope gets a lot steeper. If we were to imagine a tangent line here, it would have a greater slope, uh, in other words, higher rise over run. Here the slope is basically flat, and then here the slope is decreasing. So where is acceleration the greatest? Well, A, it's accelerating, but not very much. It's a slow acceleration. And then C, we're basically at a constant speed there briefly, so that's almost no acceleration. D, we're basically stopped, so that's also no acceleration. 
Here you can see is the greatest angle of slope on this graph, so the answer should be that. All right, so that's the highest slope. That means it's the highest acceleration. Cool. Next. So a, here we've got a train. Let me zoom in on the text here briefly. A train travels along a track from these imaginary, between these imaginary towns, A town and B town. And this shows the route. It's not a straight line. It turns out that doesn't actually matter for this question. So it tells you that the distance traveled between the towns is 210 kilometers. So the distance traveled. So it's telling you how far the train traveled. All right, we don't really care how far a straight line distance is between those two towns. We just care how long the track is, and it tells us 210 kilometers. So then it also tells us that the train is moving at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour. Now what we need is um, to remind ourselves that distance is equal to speed times time. Now what we're looking for here is how long does the journey take? How long? All right. So speed distance equals speed times time. So we want time. We need a formula for time. Time is going to equal distance divided by speed. We just use basic algebra for that. OK, so time is equal to distance over speed. Our distance here is 210 kilometers, and our speed is 70 kilometers per hour. So distance goes over speed, distance on top of speed. So we should see we're looking for the answer that has 210 divided by 70. All right, and that is going to be this one here. So that's the that's the basic way that you solve that problem. Moving right along. All right, so we have a couple more problems here. This one is pretty straightforward. It says the circuit, so that would be the basically the circuit, the circle of a racetrack is three kilometers in length. So the whole circle, three kilometers. I'll just do a quick little diagram. Let's say it looks like this. All right, then the distance of that is three kilometers, right, all the way around the circle. So this says that the car, a race car, goes 25 times around the track in 30 minutes. Now I'm going to zoom in so that we can get more into a small space. All right, so we want to know first, because it asks us to calculate average speed. Average speed, now remember speed, we'll just write really quick, speed is going to equal distance divided by time. Okay, so what we need is a distance divided by a time. So we need to find first how far does the car travel. And it says uh, it goes 25 times around the three kilometer track. So the distance, distance equals 25 kilometers, sorry, 25 times around the track times three kilometers. So that's going to be 75 kilometers is the distance traveled. All right, then we need to know how long it took. And it took half an hour, all right, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So we could take 75 divided by 30, um, but that's not going to give us the right answer because we need to use these. If you notice the units here, they're all in hours. So we need to know how long that is in hours. All right, distance over time, it's 30 minutes. 30 minutes is half of an hour. So what we have here is, uh, zoom in, get us some space. All right, the speed is equal to 75 kilometers in half an hour. So it's divided by, let's just say 0 0.5 hours. If you put that into your calculator, what you're going to get out is your answer. So if you divide by half, all right, speed divided by half, 75 divided by half, actually it's multiplied by two. So you've got 150 kilometers per hour is the speed. Okay, 150. So let's zoom back out here. 
and the answer is that one. All right, next, again, we have a conceptual one. What is basically the definition of acceleration is the question here. So which of these statements is the correct one? Well, we have acceleration is related to the changing speed of an object, or we have it is the distance that it travels in one second, we have a force acting on the object divided by the distance it travels, or we have force acting on an object when it is near to the Earth. All right, D here is gravity. C is nothing that I know of. It's not a physical quantity, really. It's just there to confuse you. B, the distance an object travels in one second. Well, that would give you your speed. All right, so B is a definition of speed, not acceleration. As you hopefully recall, acceleration is a change in speed divided by how long it took So, to make that change in the speed. So that's your answer for that one. All right, now what we've got here is uh, the first time I'm doing a problem like this in these videos. Um, as you see the title there, this is a more advanced problem. It has multiple parts. Um, so we'll go into this and I'll do it here with you in this video so that you can see how this sort of a question works. All right, so what we have going on here is a bus that's traveling from one bus stop to the next bus stop, and they tell you that there's three distinct parts to the journey. And in order, so first you've got this one, uniform acceleration from rest for eight seconds, then you've got uniform speed for 12 seconds, and then non-uniform deceleration for five seconds. All right, uniform means constant, so it's going to be a straight line. All right, now what we're looking at then is, all right, the first thing it tells us to do is complete the graph. Okay, so we have to take that information they give us and we have to finish the graph. You can see only the last part is there on the graph. So we'll start with uniform acceleration for eight seconds. Actually, you know, we're not going to start there. We need to know we have to kind of work backwards because we don't know how fast it's accelerating. All we know is that it accelerates up until eight seconds and then it goes at constant speed and then it decelerates for five seconds. If we look at this part of the graph, you can see that's five seconds there. So we know that whatever this point is here, that's the point where it was traveling at constant speed um, up until that point. So the speed, the constant speed that it's been traveling at is right here uh, at this point, right there. So we're going to go backwards to eight seconds, which requires us to count these little lines. And if you're looking at the lines, you can see there, there's 10 lines between here, but only five markings. So every, every line is half of a second. So what we've got there is eight is going to be one, two, three, four back, right about there, will be eight. So we're going to trace this line backwards. I'll use red so we can see it better. And it's going to be, this is not going to be exact because it's really hard for me to use my finger on this tablet. I really need to get a stylus. Anyway, straight back until eight seconds, which is right there. Okay, obviously that little part there is not well marked. Okay, so that should be eight seconds at that point. Now we can finish and draw a straight line to the origin. Now, if you were doing this on your paper, I hope you would be using a ruler. I'm just gonna have to guesstimate. All right, so your graph should look like this. Cool, all right, so now we've finished the graph. That's the first thing they asked us to do. Nice. Moving on. All right, so here we have the uh, rest of the problem written out here. Um, I've reproduced the graph off to the side there so that we can reference that because we will need to do that, and I don't want to go back to the previous slide. So here we go. First thing it tells us to do is find the acceleration of the bus four seconds after it leaves the first bus, so bus stop. So first bus stop is there. We're going to calculate the 
acceleration after four seconds. Now this is not going to be exact because I wasn't able to draw an exactly straight line, but we'll do the best we can. All right. So four seconds is going to be right there. So that we're going to follow that up to here and then over to there. All right. So what we need that spot. Okay. So basically we just traced the graph to figure out what point we're at and it looks like we're at uh, one, two, three lines above five. So that would be six and a half meters per second is the speed that it's going at that point. And that's in four seconds. So if we calculate that acceleration, remember, is the slope so it, or this the change in velocity over time. So the change in velocity is from zero up until 6.5. So we've got 6.5 uh, meters per second divided by four seconds. So six and a half divided by four. All right, and just to make this, well, I'll do that in my calculator, so hang on. All right, and when we work that out in the calculator, I'm going to write the answer over here in the blank spot. It's going to be 1.6 meters per second squared. Now, if I had done this more accurately, it would probably work out to be 1.5 meters per second squared, but this is the best I can do looking at this with my imprecision. All right, so next, next thing. Um, use the graph to estimate estimate the distance that the bus travels between 20 and 25 seconds. Now why do we need to estimate? Because the acceleration is not constant through here. It's, a, it's not constant. It's close to constant, so essentially what we'll do is we'll pretend that this is a straight line here, which it's not, but we'll pretend it's a straight line and then we'll calculate the area under here, which would be a triangle. So, um, essentially, what we're trying to figure out is this area right in here. Okay, so we'll use our formula for a triangle, one-half base times height. We'll just do it off to the side here. One-half times the base is five seconds. The height there, now actually we're going to need to go over and figure out what is the height. And the height, one, two, three, four, we're four lines above ten, so that means two. So two meters per second higher than ten, ten plus two is twelve. So twelve meters per second is the speed that we're going at the at twenty seconds. Alright, so essentially the the rise there is 12. All right. So basically this point right there is 12 meters per second on the y-axis. So what does that come out to? Well, you've got 5 times 12, which is 60. Half of that is 30. Thirty meters, just meters, is how far the Thing traveled approximately probably a bit less than that but uh, well obviously it will be a little bit less than that because we're including some of the portion above the line but our estimate would be about 30 a little less than 30 okay so just zip over here um, and we'll just do a little squiggly about 30 meters okay now possibly we could be a little bit more precise than that, but this should be good enough for this problem. All right. So upon leaving the second bus stop, the uniform acceleration of the bus is 1.2 meters per second, it tells us, and the mass of the bus plus passengers is 4,000 kilograms. Um, you know what? I just realized we can't do this one because we don't know yet how to calculate force. So we're going to skip that part. Sorry about that. We'll come, maybe we'll come back and do that another time. Um, 
so the then it tells us that the acceleration of the bus from the second stop is less than the acceleration from the first stop, and it gives us it asks us to suggest some reasons. Uh, not going to worry too much about this, but at least one reason would be that um, it picked up passengers. So there's more passengers. So it's more weight. There's more weight, there's more mass on board. So it's harder to accelerate when there's more mass. All right, we'll just go with that for now. Cool. So that is an example of a more challenging, more complicated problem. Hope that was clear. Uh, we'll see you in class.